Hello there, welcome to AWS Tech Guide session. In this session, I will be talking about Architecture Decision Record or ADR. ADR is nothing but a architecture document. What is ADR? Why we need to write ADR? When should we write ADR and the best practices? I will be talking in this session. So let's proceed. First, what is ADR? ADR is nothing but a document which captures all the significant changes in architectural design. Now, what does this mean by significant change? Now, this significant or the degree of significancy can be defined by you in your organization, what you call a significant change in your organization. Okay, but suppose there is a significant change in your organization in IT architectural design. Suppose you're thinking of implementing microservices or DevOps practices in a new project or existing project. Then based on the context, we need to think of that what are the implications? What are the pros and cons? Based on that, there is a document needs to be created and that is called architecture decision record. Architecture decision record, this is a very important document is required to capture all the decisions and why these decisions were made. That's the vital part. So in future, if someone is looking into a particular thing and trying to find out that why this decision was made, this ADR document will have everything very precisely mentioned. So the document captures the context of how the decision is made. Now, our next thing is when to write architecture design record. Suppose when we have a problem statement, then definitely there is a need to do something. So first thing is that is there a problem statement? If it is yes, is there a solution available? If that solution is available, we have to check whether it is documented because we do n number of discussions every day in our organization. We take numerous decisions, but very few are documented. So the importance of documentation is to capture the decision and how that decision was made. So if there is a solution already available, check whether it is documented or not. If it is not documented, you write the ADR. That is the documentation for your change in architecture. And on the other hand side, if there is a solution not available, then you are automatically writing your ADR document. Now, what are the best practices for writing ADR? When you are writing ADR, keep these things in mind that Capture the context precisely. It is not that a hundred page documents. It is a very smart document having clearly mentioned what is the problem statement and the background or the context precisely. Next, establish the decision based on all the considered scenarios. So before that, you have to capture the considered scenarios. Means it, the decision is not based on a particular scenario. There will be many brainstorming session and meetings where people will come up with multiple scenarios. Now there will be few scenarios which will be considered. Now based on that considered scenarios, a decision will be made. Capture positive and negative both consequences. Because when a decision is made, Definitely, there will be consequences, both positive and negative. Document those positive and negative consequences as well. Clarify every considered option with pros and cons. Document it separately in this ADI documentation. Consider organizational standards and policy. To align your solution or to align your decision with the organizational vision and mission, Definitely, as well as enterprise architecture policies and standard of an organization, 
you have to think of the standards and compliance when writing the ADR. Now, how the ADR looks like or what are the elements of ADR? I will show you a template of a sample ADR, but before that, let's see what are the elements of ADR. First element is title. Title is very short and just a short description of the problem statement. Status. There are various status. Approved, rejected, deprecated, or superseded. Metadata, I call this uh, category where uh, like every documentation, you must have who created, when created, who approved, and when approved. These are the metadata. Now context, this is the one of the important part in ADR. This is the precise description of the problem statement. Giving background of the problem statement that what is that problem, what is the reason or the what is the business driver behind this change. Decision drivers, the reason of concern or the problem scenarios. Maybe there are multiple problem scenarios. So that's why it is a list reason of concern. You may have multiple reason of concern. Considered options. So now for every reason of concern, you may have multiple proposed solution. You write down all those. Till this point, it is not that you will write only the selected or the perfect options. But we have to write everything what is being discussed in multiple meeting, consolidate all the solutions, all the reason of concern or problem scenarios. Now the next element is decision chosen or what is the decision? Now when selecting or taking a decision or documenting the decision in architecture decision record, we have to be very specific that which option is selected because of what justifications and proposed solutions which resolves the reason of concerns because we are recording our decision based on the number of problem scenarios of a particular problem statements to provide a solution for reason of concern. That's why this decision portion is very important to write it very specifically because that's the decision part that what is the decision taken for this problem statement. Now, next part is consequences. Now, when a decision is taken, what could be the consequences for this decision? Capture all the positive and negative consequences. Next, evaluate options. Every option or the proposed solution which were discussed, record their pros and cons for options. Like, if, some, if an option is good, why it is good? If an option is bad, why it is bad? Capture all those. And the last portion is notes and references. Makes If you are using any material, external material or internal links, document, which helps in your decision making. Now, these are the number of elements in ADR. But now let me emphasize that there is no specific number of ADR, you can customize it as per your organizational requirement. But these are the very basic element you need to capture in your ADR. You will find a long list of elements for ADR for some organization. That is fine. So you can tailor made the ADR elements for your organization. But make sure that you capture at least these elements in ADR. Now let me show you a sample ADR format. You can write the ADR in a plain text or in word format, or if you are using any tool like Confluence, you can go for that. I, I'll be showing you the template in a Confluence page. So here is a template for architecture decision record where you have title, status created by, created on, approved by, approved on, context, decision driver, as you see, that we have multiple reasons of concern. 
considered options is also a list that's why solution one two three four decision made consequences evaluated options notes and references this is just a template now how you draft this template what are the elements you want to add or modify as per your organizational need that is totally up to you but creating adr or recording the decisions is very very important till now hope you got an understanding that what is adr why it is written when to write adr and the best practices for writing adr as well as the elements of adr thank you for your time see you in our next session